So this was the spring of 2009. My local car club had a little shop space uh, downtown Eau Claire. And so I talked to my guys in the club and told them what I was trying to do. And they agreed to let me rent a couple shop stalls there so I could kind of start to get my business off the ground. So I had a little shop space and the weather was getting nicer. So we started taking it to some more car shows and ended up bringing it to the Carcraft Nationals in St. Paul, Minnesota. And immediately, it was like within the first 20 minutes that we got there, Doug Glad from Carcraft Magazine came up in a golf cart, saw the car, and he asked me if it had been in any magazines yet. I said, no, this is like one of our first outings with the car. And he said, well, we'd love to shoot it. And I said, absolutely, let's do it. So we shot the car for Carcraft and it got into the magazine a few months later. And then all of a sudden it was like we were getting all this attention. And that was like the beginning of it. It was like, all right, well, this, this could be a viable business. So we kind of took that momentum and we picked up a couple of customers from that. Uh, ended up doing a 69 Super B for a guy and then a 69 Dart. Did some upgrade work to that and just kind of slowly started these little building blocks. And eventually we realized that, you know, this little shop space that I was, you know, using uh, out of our car club area was just not gonna be enough. So I started kind of beating the pavement, looking for a place to, to call my own and came across a guy, Jim Fitch from United Auto Body, who had a couple of stalls that he was able to sublet to me, which was the perfect grounds for starting my operation. And Jim really kind of took me under his wing and uh, basically opened up his whole shop and just, you know, kind of let me do my thing, but also let me use his shop equipment and tools. He was a 30 year body and paint guy, so I would sub out my body and paint work to him. As time went on, you know, we, we kept getting more and more notoriety from that dart. Uh, ended up getting into Mopar Muscle Magazine, which kind of expanded our horizons even further. And the phone kept ringing more and more. And the next thing you know, I had like three, four car projects on the books. And it was like, okay, well, this is, this is working out. So at that time it was like, I'm, I'm probably gonna need another set of hands because it was me full time and my dad would come and help me out here and there. But I realized that this was gonna go somewhere. So I brought another guy on board and then about six months later, brought another guy on board, got a couple more projects and slowly but surely, we just kind of started building it. About that time, I was kind of running out of the, the shop space that I was renting. And so fortunately, in that same building, some more shop space became available. That shop was, it was in pretty rough condition. So there was a whole lot of cleanup and painting, um, had to get a couple air compressors, run new airlines, you know, purchase a whole bunch of equipment and just start building out that shop. And during that time, you know, everything was, it was tooth and nail. You know, I was just learning how to run a restoration business, just learning how to run a business in general, you know, managing employees, managing, ordering parts, keeping customers happy. It was just all kind of happening in that first two, three years. And so there was just, it was a lot of sleepless nights. It was just a lot of grinding. I was pretty much just getting by on pure adrenaline there for the first few years. You know, it was, it was a lot of hand to mouth and just scratching and clawing my way through it. Just knowing that in, in my mind, I knew that the business was going somewhere. It was moving in a good direction, but you know, looking back at those early days, it was just, they were very lean times and it was, it was a struggle every single day. It was just, you know, managing so many different aspects of running a business and, and how to make everything work and keep people happy. But, you know, those are, the, those are the times that really, you know, they put you to the test and you, you figure out quickly whether you have what it takes to make it or not. I'm happy that those days are behind me, but I think about those days every single day and I, I try to stay hungry because of that. It keeps my fire fueled, you know, even, even today, thinking back at those times.